Hello, I'm Michael Louie. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. And today, uh, I will discuss some aspects of codes of engineering ethics. All um, professions have codes of ethics that exp express their special moral obligations. And these uh, professions, uh, organizations, publish those codes of ethics. All engineering organizations, in particular, have codes of ethics. The Accreditation Board for Engineering and Technology, or ABET, is the organization that accredits educational programs, and it has a model code of ethics. The National Council of Exam Examiners for Engineering and Surveying, or NCWES, administers the professional engineer licensing exams. The National Society of Professional Engineers, which is the organization of licensed engineers, uh, has a, a fairly long and detailed code of ethics, um, and one can lose one's license for violating uh, the Code of Ethics. Various disciplinary societies, such as the American Society of Civil Engineers, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, and so on, also have their own uh, codes of ethics. Now, you might think, why do we need different kinds of codes of ethics? Well, different codes of ethics serve different purposes. Um, the IEEE, or Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers, has an aspirational code. That is a code that talks about the highest ideals of the profession without giving a lot of details. Uh, the Association for Computing Machinery has a code that is, ex is explicitly educational. For each rule in the ACM code, there is a paragraph of interpretation and explanation. In addition, the code is published with a list of cases a set of cases that illustrate application of the code in making decisions. Third, a code allows an engineer to, uh, a, 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 the code supports the decisions that an engineer might make. It allows an engineer to object to unsafe practices, not just as a matter of individual conscience, but with the weight of the entire profession. The engineer could say, you are asking me to violate my profession's code of ethics. I could lose my license. So, State boards of registration can revoke an engineer's license for violations of registration laws, which are also informally called codes of ethics. We will now examine the IEEE code of ethics because it's shorter than the other engineering codes of ethics, and we can see what a complete code of ethics looks like. The uh, current or 2006 version of the code begins with a uh, very um, uh, inspirational introduction. We, the members of the IEEE, in recognition of the importance of our technologies in affecting the quality of life throughout the world and in accepting a personal obligation to our profession, its members, and the communities we serve, do hereby commit ourselves to the highest ethical and professional conduct and agree, one, to accept responsibility in making decisions consistent with the safety, health, and welfare of the public and to disclose promptly factors that might endanger the public or the environment. All engineering codes of ethics put the obligation to ensure the health, safety, and welfare of the public first. Everyone, of course, has an obligation not to endanger others. Engineers have a special responsibility because they create the machines, such as cars and, s and systems, such as power grids, that can significantly endanger the public. Also, this is a s there's a special responsibility to speak up when an engineer notices a safety problem, even when it's a problem that's not uh, of their making. It's not their project and not even their employer. So this is an obligation that does not say only for your projects or only for your employer. It's an absolute obligation. Second, to avoid real or perceived conflicts of interest whenever possible and to disclose them to affected parties when they do exist. Another video in this collection talks about codes of uh, uh, conflicts of interest. So I will refer you to that. Third, to be honest and realistic in stating claims or estimates based on available da data. This is a basic obligation of honesty with employers and clients. One might be tempted to report only favorable results from lab tests or to underbid to get a contract. But as a consequence, uh, there could be serious consequences from even uh, small matters of dishonesty. What ab and in addition, what about the one's long-term um, reputation uh, for personal integrity? or the long-term imp impact from erroneous data or insufficient budgets. Fourth, to reject bribery in all its forms, including grease payments, kickbacks, and so on. Fifth, to improve the understanding of technology, its appropriate application, and potential consequences. This is an obligation of IEEE members and perhaps engineers more generally to inform the public about technology and its uh, uh, consequences. Sixth, 
to maintain and improve our technical competence and to undertake technological tasks for others only if qualified by training or experience or after full disclosure of pertinent limitations. So here is an obligation uh, for clients and employers that uh, engineers should take only jobs that they can uh, do competently. And of course, that's difficult to do with new technologies. So the IEEE code also has a, this um, phrase that says only if uh, full disclosure of pertinent limitations. Notice also that this uh, provision of the co code obligates uh, engineers to improve their technical competence, not simply to uh, perform work only for which they're competent, but also to improve their own technical competence. And so this means an obligation to engage in uh, continued professional development. Seventh, to seek, accept, and offer honest criticism of technical work to acknowledge and correct errors and to credit properly the contributions of others. These are, uh, this is an obligation that, uh, of, um, that talks about the relationship with other engineers. Honest critique of technical work, proper credit to others. Uh, this speaks to uh, engineering uh, work as being peer reviewed and in a collegial context in which uh, credit must be given to other people for, for uh, their ideas. Eighth, to treat fairly all persons regardless of such factors as race, religion, gender, disability, age, or national origin. Fairness here might include access to services, which is uh, a provision in, in some other uh, professions, codes of ethics. Ninth, to avoid injuring others, uh, their property, reputation, or employment by false or malicious action. Uh, avoiding injury to others would also include uh, uh, avoiding uh, divulging of confidential information such as trade secrets or other intellectual property. Uh, the code does not have an explicit statement about intellectual property, unlike some other codes, but uh, one could uh, interpret this provision, the ninth provision, as including um, uh, an obligation to ensure this uh, confidentiality of trade secrets. Tenth, to assist colleagues and co-workers in their professional development and to support them in following this code of ethics. So here's an obligation, another obligation to other professionals, in this case to help them continue to grow and develop. So this is an obligation of experienced professionals to help uh, younger professionals uh, grow and develop and also to help them follow this code of ethics. Um, there's some good references of code of ethics. There's an online repository of professional codes of ethics at the in Illinois Institute of Technology with that uh, web address. The IEEE Code of Ethics itself is on the IEEE website at uh, that long uh, URL. And finally, uh, there's an excellent article by Michael Davis on the whole purpose of a code of ethics, especially for engineers.